The weight of overlying rock and fluids creates pressure in the oil reservoir. That pressure is key to forcing the oil to the surface. In the oil patch, that's known as primary recovery. The beginning of primary recovery is just letting the reservoir do what it can. It's down there, it's under pressure when we start. Eventually, the pressure drops low enough that we have to start pumping it. Primary recovery can produce about 10 to 20 percent of the oil in the reservoir. In the 1950s, oil companies learned how to use water to get even more oil out of the ground. Secondary recovery uh, was invented about 60 years ago, and that usually employs injecting water into the oil and gas reservoir, which will raise the pressure back up and force more oil out of the reservoir. Secondary recovery can produce another 10 to 20 percent of the original oil in place. Many of the oil fields in the United States and Canada now inject water to produce more oil. In the 1970s, Texas oil men started using a new technique to produce additional oil from older fields. This tertiary recovery technique used carbon dioxide. CO2 was selected because there was some laboratory tests that showed it to be a method by which you could change the properties of the oil in the formation. Thin it up, basically, and loosen it from the rock, if you will, and swell it. That's really the definition of an enhanced oil recovery process, that one that changes the properties of the oil, allows you to recover more of it. During CO2 enhanced oil recovery, some of the CO2 stays underground and some comes back with the oil. When you CO2 flood, we leave in that reservoir about 60% of the CO2. We only get back about 40%. Then we strip that out of the oil and gas and put it back in the ground. But that means that we're constantly buying new CO2 in our CO2 floods. CO2 enhanced oil recovery was like discovering new oil without drilling new wells.